Okay, so in this talk, I'm going to consider an interesting fact about monoids. So this is a fact slightly more general than group theory, but it, it's particularly important in the context of group theory. Okay, and that is as follows. So let's say you have what's called a monoid. So that's just a set with a binary operation. It's called, just a set with a binary operation is called a magma. Okay, and now if you assume that the binary operation is associative, Okay, like this for all inputs and it has an identity element that is uh, this. Okay, now when I say for all x, y, z and s, am I allowing x, y, z to possibly be equal? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. Now, we have already seen, I hope, that if there is a left identity and a right identity, they are equal. Right? Why? How did we do that? Um, by associating law. No, you don't use associative law for just proving identities are e left and right identities are equal. How do you do that? Uh, now you multiply e to the left. Uh, yeah, you multiply the left one with the right one and then yeah. simplify it to this. Yeah. Okay, so, so great. Now, uh, so we just assume we have a two-sided identity. Okay, and so the f operation is associative and it has a two-sided identity. Such a set with such an operation is called a monoid. Okay. Now, what's a group in terms of a monoid? It's a monoid where, hmm? what's the relation between monoids and groups? A group is a monoid where, where every element has a, has a what? What's the additional axiom you need to make a group? Every element has a what? But what's the third thing in groups? Multiplicative, multiplicative inverse, yeah. So every element has a two-sided multiplicative inverse. Mm -hmm. Now what we try, what we'll try to show is that for a monoid, if you have an element which has a left inverse and a right inverse, then the left and the right inverse have to be equal. So left inverse, so B is the left inverse of A if B times A is the identity, and C is the right inverse of A if A times C is the identity, and we want to prove that B equals C. Okay. What is the idea behind the proof? Well, let's first think about it. Maybe you already know what the idea is. You do? Don't tell me. Do you do you know what, what product we have to consider? Yes. Okay, good. So you know it, but but some on our uh, online audience may not. So let's think about this a bit. We want to use associativity. We want to pit B against C. But we want to use A as well, right? So we want to sort of put A in the middle. We want to put B and C sort of, they are trying to sort of interact with each other, but A is in between. Okay? okay. And we want to use associativity. So what product should we, should we consider? Well, you said you know. So... Uh, B by A. Times? Times C. Okay. Now, there's two ways you could associate this. Right? You could associate this As so, how could you associate this? There's two ways you could do that, right? Mm -hmm. What are the two ways? B by A or A by C and A by C. Okay, so you could consider B star A star C. C. And it's also equal to the other direction, which is other associative mm -hmm. thing, which is B times A times A. Okay. Now, how does this simplify? What's B times A? Okay. So, we use B times A as E. And what, what does E star C simplify to? Using that E as the identity, what does E star C, C simplify C. to? C. Okay. Okay, what about the other side? So, B times A times C, what does that simplify to? B star E. B star E. So, this uses E as identity. Here. And this uses A star C equals E. And now, B star E simplifies to? B. So, we get B equals C. Okay, great. Now, So, now let's try to understand why this is significant. So, there are sort of two ways this is significant. Okay. The first is, the more, sort of more important one, is that 
you get an immediate corollary. If an element in a monoid has a standard of proof, if an element in a monoid has a two-sided inverse, then that's unique. Do you see why that's true? Yeah, you just proved it. Well, I actually proved something slightly different, so just explain why that's true. Two-sided inverse means there's another element which is both a left and a right inverse. Okay, but how does it follow from it that you can have at most one two-sided inverse? Hmm? Oh, what do you mean? So, I'm saying if, how do you prove this, this statement I made? How do you prove it from the statement I made above? Um, well, suppose there are more than one two-sided inverse. Then what do you do? You prove them equals each other. How? Well, you treat one of them as left and the other one is right. Mm -hmm. Right? If both are two-sided, you can definitely do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, that's good. So, this follows just from that, treating one as left and the other is right. So, Another uh, related thing which is not so important, so I won't write that down, is that if an element has left, so if every element has a left inverse and every element has a right inverse, that's equivalent to saying that every element has a two-sided inverse. Mm -hmm. Okay, But that's not so important. What I want to stress is another corollary of this, which is that, that the inverse operation in a group is uniquely determined by its multiplication. So can you explain that? Yeah, what do I mean by that? I'm not sure. Okay, so suppose you are given a group, right? There's a group multiplication there. Now, there is, by definition of group, there's always a two-sided inverse to everything. Now, the question is, can you have another two-sided inverse for any element? Or is the two-sided inverse unique? unique? Unique by the above thing, right? So, what that essentially says is that if you know the multiplication of a group, then the inverse map of the group is uniquely determined. You don't have any choice of of how to fix the inverse of an element, okay? So why is this important? Well, there's some definitions of group where the inverse map is considered part of the structure of the group, right? And there's other definitions where you say, oh, we don't consider the inverse part of the structure of the group, we just say inverses exist, okay? And what this is saying is that those two definition types are not really different because if you know the group multiplication, then the inverse operation is already uniquely determined based on that. So whether you specify it as part of the structure or whether you just sort of add it on later, doesn't matter. Okay? Great. Right. 